Welcome to the main stage here in Berlin at the University Future Festival 2023. Welcome back those of you who have been joining us earlier. Welcome those of you who are joining us now. And I would like to welcome Gilly Salmon now, who is joining us from Australia. Professor Gilly Salmon has been uh, a learning innovator for more than 30 years and is one of the world's leading thinkers in digital and blended learning. She researches and publishes on the themes of innovation and change in higher education. And she is internationally renowned for her significant contributions to education futures. She's joining us from Melbourne, as I said, and we'll talk about how we can be ready for the future in a century of complexity and uncertainty. I might point out that, as always, there's the opportunity to ask questions at the end of the keynote. You can uh, ask questions here in the uh, Q&A. And yeah, please welcome Gillis Salmon with her keynote, Can You Future-Proof Your Education for a Century of Complexity and Uncertainty? Hello, Gilly, can you hear us? I can't hear you. <laughs> We just check that a minute. Ah, you're muted, I guess. Uh, no. Now we hear you. We hear you. Okay. 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 <laughs> There we go. Hi. Uh, thanks very much for that introduction. Um, I'm delighted to talk to you about the future. Um, my premise is that we should make future proof in education a normal part of what everything we do for everyone. So there's two parts to my talk today. One is what you can do, where we're at, um, and the other is just a very brief summary of the landscape in which we're operating, which of course is pretty different from the past. So it's a think piece for you, really. It's a question, can you future prove? So first of all, just have a think about where you're at, who you are, do you look a around and think, oh my goodness, how on earth did that happen? We all have a bit of fun with timelines and technology, I know, but we don't generally go beyond the next year or so and what we've got to do. So some of us are standing by and just watching what happens. But if you want to create the future, you actually need to do a little bit more than that. And if you don't create it, and as educators, we should be the ones to create it, then someone else will do it for you. I was recently watching the launch uh, to Mer the Mercury moons um, of, of the wonderful approach to that. And I'll put a little link to you there. And I thought how complex that was, how many people had to do really deep, radical collaboration to make that happen. And you know, if we're all capable of doing that or bringing something to the table, surely, surely it's time for us to be able to future-proof and start to make this real incredible contribution to the future from everything each one of us does as individuals or as groups. So um, for my short talk today, I've picked five areas that I hope you'll enjoy. First of all, of course, I strongly feel that we do really need to design for the future and then deploy many times. And this is part of the critical aspects of sustainability, which does need to become kind of a normal part of education in future, indeed the lifeblood of learning. Um, secondly, we do need to start with visions. There's no transformation without a vision of what the future includes. And I'm going to show you one or two simple ways of doing that together with your co colleagues. Thirdly, we need to create learning aspirations. We need to go beyond telling students, this is what you need to learn, because all of us are in a rapidly changing adaptive system. So we need to help them to see that. So I'm going to take a quick look at what really, really matters for them, what might inspire them, which is definitely beyond just getting a well-paid job. Nearly all students these days have an understanding of sustainability and want to make a contribution to the world, either directly or at least to work for an ethical and sustainable organization. And then this whole issue of how we constantly 
engage stakeholders, not just saying, okay, please come to a brainstorming vision, but actually truly engage. And this is the way missions like the one to Mercury happen, you know, incredible engagement. And we should model ourselves on that, in my view. Um, and lastly, and not the least, of course, we know there's future technologies. Of course, they're challenging. Of course, that we need to work on this symbiosis between ourselves and, and, and the technology world. So not too much on that, because I'm sure you're going to hear loads about AI throughout the conference, but just a little nod to how you can include it in your design. So that's what I'm about today. Here we go. First of all, some of you may be teaching in design driven industries and sectors. Others may be less so, but my premise is this, that every one of us now needs to understand the design diamond and how it works in order to create the future for learning and teaching, education, assessment, and so on. Um, so I've put a, a few references all the way through here, and of course, there's more references at the end as well. So those of you who are interested in following up on this, you'll be able to pick up the slides. So this is my interpretation of the design diamond for education provision, for designing for the future for education. And of course, it's diverge, converge, diverge, converge. That's how the diamond works. So you start with the end in mind, that transformational vision. You need to create that vision rather than take somebody else's and then converge together to agree some principles. Seek to understand what the impact of that is. And then diverge again, explore together, and then take some decisions, checking your vision all the time, that it is transformational and it's not just something you've always done. Then try out some prototypes. Any designer always prototypes. Do we prototype our new education? No, on the whole not. Um, and then bring some choices to a storyboard, be more Disney, create storyboards, create your story going forward, and then share and agree, and then you need to build. And we've got the big advantage, we can build through technology, so we can then deploy it many times. So if you don't remember anything from else from my talk today, I will hope you'll remember this idea of diverge, converge, diverge, converge, because that will make the biggest difference. In my own work, I've brought this together in something that's become known as Carpe Diem Learning Design. It's building in that design diamond along with seminal activities, which I'm going to show you in the second part of my talk. So if any of you are interested in trying this out locally with your colleagues, then please have a look at, it's on my website, and it will tell you all about Carpe Diem Learning Design. Um, and, and also how you can engage with my work to help you to do it. Um, because it's complex, and that's what I'm going to talk about now. Again, I'm sure throughout this conference, there's many people are going to talk about some of the key mega drivers for change in the next year, five years, 10 years, and that's where our vision needs to go. After all, we're educating people for the future whether they're young people or re-education, lifelong learning, lifelongness and sustainability is the true lifeblood of learning. So obviously we've got technological advancements, particularly from the point of view of education, that we need to educate people using symbiosis so they're ready for different working lives in the future. True, the pandemic gave us a push on that, but we need to revisit that with a deeper dive and a bit of death. And then obviously, the democratics with longer life, increasing diversity, impacts, economics, politics, social systems. It's a lot of responsibility for us, those of us who are guiding people. Globalization, societies, changes in government, balances of power, the whole geopolitical area, and of course, not the least, climate change, what's a longer term future for our climate. Now, you know about all these things, and I know it can be very difficult to say, oh my goodness, how am I going to educate my students? How am I going to engage with this to make a big difference? 
I absolutely promise you that every action you take in your education is truly going to make a difference. So let's just look at it as a complex adaptive system where you've got the planet itself, okay, that is then influencing your country, wherever you are, the, your employment and that of your students, the contribution you make, no less, uh, to the world. And then, of course, most of you listen to me now are in the higher education sector. And so we've got responsibilities for our sector and the turmoil that's going in, in on many places now. We've never been a sector that's settled down, really. Not in this last century, anyway. Um, and each one of those is really influencing and influence, and it can feel that we can't do anything. Um, however, I would argue you can. I think you can really get to many, many of you, as well as being educators and researchers, you'll be involved in your own discipline and your own profession, and they're changing just as much. And then you can take leadership positions, you can influence what's going on for the future, which will help you to then prepare your students better. Or you might have a leadership uh, position in your university. If it's not an official formal one, it may well be one where you can bring people with you. Informal is good, diversity is good. And then there's your actual program of learning. And you can influence that. You can design and future-proof that. So even though I understand that complex adaptive systems may make many of us into watchers rather than designers, just get this idea of designing for the future. And you will carry people with you. And you will look back, as I have over a long career, and think, OK, well, I did make a bit of a difference there. So this is where we're at. And I'm going to argue that some very practical tools that I'm going to suggest for you now will enable you to make a difference to what's going on. So here come some concepts. These are ones that I've been researching over a long period of time. They're not something I invented during the pandemic. My work started with the UK Open University in the 1990s and has gone on. So what I would argue is that you need to invest in evidence but then bring it forward to apply to the new concept that we're in now, your context and the future context. And you do that again at the risk of constantly arguing this through design. So then we need to add the future fun fundamentals for students. There's lots of stuff around about education 4.0, industry 4.0, globalization 4.0. These are the ones that I focus on in my work and make sure that any transformational vision includes these four students. They've got to be adaptable, just like us, even more adaptable than us, probably. They've got to be creative, just like us. They need this kind of systems thinking. That's what we need to offer. There is going to be a great need for emotional intelligence and leadership in all the forms. So. That's where I would say, if you've got a future vision, start with one of them. Start with one of them in your teaching. And then, of course, the stakeholders themselves, you've got so many other things, the university, your professions, um, and you could get alumni and recent graduates involved. And then there's the, the juice shot, which is what they call the mercury moon shots. It is really important where you're looking for that diamond to bring in critical friends, futurists, somebody from a different faculty and some of the carpe diem learning design will invite somebody from arts into science, from somebody from language into philosophy and so on. So the way we do this in my organization to get that strong future vision, to get that really deep collaboration that's needed in order to diverge and start to create the future, we do it through collectively creating a visual impact. I'm going to show you just a few of these. You can see lots more on, on my website if you'd like to. This was one we did in Norway recently. 
um, is actually looking at the students at the heart of what's going on in the future. Um, it's acknowledging the landscape that they're in. That's Norway down the left-hand side there. Um, but it's actually looking forward to the network that will be the world. This is another one that I did in the UK. Um, this is about an MBA in horse riding. So this time they put the welfare of the horse at the beginning. On the left-hand side is all the traditions of the horse racing industry and all the changes on the right-hand side of where uh, technology is having a huge impact on the, on the industry itself. Here's another one in healthcare. This was where we were looking to change the way health placements and internships were done to make them more digital, to make them more sustainable, to make them more appropriate for students. And they experienced it as a helter skelter where they were going up and down, up and down, but they saw the mountains of the future. And this was a, um, in the area of law where they were imagining their whole remote university. Now, these were all done collaboratively using those stakeholders that you saw earlier. Now, when it comes to designing with this kind of vision, um, we actually look at these four ele six elements. It is necessary to deconstruct, disrupt yourself a little bit and look at the different ways that you can actually then put it back together. I'll show you what it looks like when you deconstruct and then reconstruct in a moment. Um, you, you might like to have a look at the five-stage model, which is my work. Some of you may be familiar with that. That's now being applied very much, not just to digital learning, but to hybrid and blend and campus enhanced learning as well. There's plenty on my website about that. And also what is very popular and does seem to help people to create the future for students is the activities framework. So there's, there's quite a lot on my YouTube channel about that and also um, activities books and so on. Um, but it's very purposeful. It always starts from this vision and then it takes those six elements of learning and reimagines them, but puts them together in a pathway for students to follow. I'm also doing quite a lot of work at the moment. You do need some sort of vision on the most appropriate mode of learning, such as location, blend, hybrid, and digital. Um, and we've certainly got an, uh, just finished a new research project over the last year on that. As you can see, there's lots of benefits and otherwise it's another talk from this, but don't just jump in and say, we're gonna do hybrid, we're gonna do blend allow that to emerge from the vision and what's best for future proofing. And then, as I said, you need to be more Disney. Disney Disney invented storyboarding originally for all the animated movies and it's gone on now. So everything you watch on Netflix, that time when it holds you in, when you really know you should go to bed, I'll just watch one more episode. That's what you need to create for your students too. And you can see it's got all those elements in it. Sure, the knowledge in the scaffolded format. Sure, loads and loads of feedback and engagement with real humans. Some synchronicity for sure, which can either be on location or online as we're doing now. Um, and also don't shortchange students, allow them time for thinking and engagement work. I've put a, a blog up there for you if you'd like to see. And one more thing about engaging students in this process. Imagine their time and their engagement as currency. So when you do your storyboard and you do your design, you actually start to allocate some of those times. That's a, a, an easy and quick way of making sure that it's viable what you're designing for students. So eventually, if you do it physically, it looks something like this each one of those little dots of students' time that's been allocated. Um, or we also use the Miro and use that to engage um, others sort of worldwide in this design. So it is possible to do it without being co-located as well. Works well. Um, and of course, you'll want to start to imagine some of the future technology, build it into your storyboard, uh, in my view, with some of the challenging things like chat GPT is to engage students in how they can use it for their learning. 
um, rather than constantly think that we need to ban it. Um, I, I quite like some of the imaging ones you can see now. I like things that are visual and imaging. This is what happened when I put the uh, DALI T in. Ask for the futures of higher education in the style of DALI. So you can do something like this. You can talk about it yourselves. You can get students to talk about it. And of course, I'm very unhappy when I hear people saying, oh, well, we're waiting to see what's going to happen with the metaverse. Unfortunately, if you just wait to see what happens, the metaverse will reproduce what's in real life. We really need to look at the emergent benefits of it and start to deploy that and build it into our learning design. Of course, I asked ChatGPT about how we could future-proof universities. I thought you might be interested to see what ChatGPT said. It's a bit small as always. If you haven't tried it, try it out for yourself. But I've put a bit of summary on the uh, right-hand side then. Incorporate emerging technologies, soft skills, I think that was some of the systems thinking, the emotional intelligence I put at the beginning. Foster lifelong learning, I'll sign up to that, engage with the industry, focus on interdisciplinary learning. I think that's a way of getting the systems thinking. And of course, encourage entrepreneurship. That's what we'd call leadership probably. So that was my summary. That's what I said I was gonna talk about. I hope you got a little bit from each one of those things, okay. Design once so that you can deploy it many times. Sustainability, sustainability, and get lasting confidence in what you're doing by using seminal activities. Do start with a new vision. Don't start designing anything without that. And create aspirations for the future from your students. Get all your stakeholders in and absorb those te technologies and use them in an emergent way. And don't forget the power of yourselves to change the world. That's what really matters. Um, so <clears throat> I've put quite a few more references at the end of these slides, um, but I hope there's time for you to um, expressions of horror, disbelief, or ask any questions. I believe we've got about six minutes left. Well, thank you very much, Gilly, for your, as I think, really encouraging words and ideas. I think we all need that at the moment. Uh, actually, yeah, we have one question. Um, from Pepe Petrov, Petrova, do you think there is a universal method or way to educate young generations to be ready for the future? An approach that could be effective no matter social, religious, cultural affiliation, beliefs and lifestyle? Right. A big uh, question. It, a <laughs> it is a big question. Um, I think I've already pointed to the way I do it. I can't say whether it It works for everyone, but over, over the years, I've worked with literally hundreds of hundreds of different disciplines and education experiences. Um, and I think what you actually need is a model that you can contextualize for your own situation. But there isn't any need for you to completely invent it. And then I think you need the storyboards that I've shown you that incorporate all the various standard methods of education. And students will respond to that. They get that. They, they do want structure, um, but they want flexibility within that. So I, I'd ask this colleague to have a look at some of the activities work. Um, as I say, I write books about it, but there's quite a lot that's open on my website, which you can see up there and also in the YouTube channel where people have discovered a simple model which has been then applied and they talk about how their students have then been hugely responsive. And it's not only in the easy disciplines. I mean, there's a, a guy from Ireland on there talking about here how he did it for his master's in AI, for example. Um, I guess computer programmers are not known for their engagement with each other. And he said, yeah, it kind of works. So, Have a look at this idea that we're all designers now and we need to engage our students in the idea of design as well. So how am I saying is that one method? Maybe, maybe I am. Give it a go anyway. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, I have a question if I might ask. You said uh, make more Disney or Netflix, like I want more, I want more, I want, want to go on. Uh, 
do you have an idea how you can reach that goal? How can yeah. you create this? Right. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, look at the Carpe Diem learning design method because it is based on the idea of collaboration and visualization of your plans. Um, if you Google on, uh, if you go onto a YouTube, um, you will see Disney doing his summer very original. There's videos of, I think, would it be 1930s, his original, working with his team. They're all standing with the pictures in front of them from some of the animated movies. And, you know, it, it's so similar to what we do now. And it's gone on now to, to design, you know, the cliffhangers that we get and all the series that we all watch on streaming channels. So I think you can get your inspiration from that. So I, that's what I mean by being more Disney. But when you get the idea of that, that, you know, they go through the, and, and they're being the animals, what's it actually like to go through this process? Well, we try and do that with, with our education provision. Um, <clears throat> and it is very collaborative. Um, and it's very different from just saying, right, they'll do this and they'll do this and they'll do something else. Um, so that that would that would, is a suggestion of where you can get your inspiration from that. Okay, and maybe just add some passion, and you're a good example for that, Gilly. Thank you very <laughs> much for talking okay. to us today, for joining us. I bet it's dinner time in Australia now. Okay, so you're very welcome. Okay, well, have a nice evening. Thank you for being here. Okay, bye everyone. Bye, everyone. Yeah. And you may stay with us in about five minutes. We'll continue here on the main stage in Berlin. In fünf Minuten ungefähr machen wir weiter hier auf der main stage mit Jan Martin Viada. Bleiben Sie dran. Bis gleich. <lacht>